Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Hear us, God our Savior, that as we rejoice in commemorating the Virgin Blessed Faustina, we may be instructed by her loving devotion through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, I am amazed that you are so quickly forsaking the one who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, not that there is another, but there are some who are disturbing you and wish to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel, other than the one that we preach to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, and now I say again, if anyone preaches to you a gospel other than the one that you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now curing favor with human beings or God, or am I seeking to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a slave of Christ. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human being, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. A response, the Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and the assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The works of his hands are faithful and just. Sure are all his precepts, reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He has sent deliverance to his people. He has ratified his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever.
Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him, and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them up. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Today the Church remembers St. Faustina. We know her to be the saint of divine mercy. And she was canonized in the year 2000 by Pope John Paul II, at which he said this. Jesus told Sister Faustina, Humanity will not find peace until it turns trustfully to divine mercy. Through the work of the Polish religious, this message has become linked forever to the 20th century. The last of the second millennium and the bridge to the third. It is not a new message, but can be considered a gift of special enlightenment that helps us to relive the gospel of Easter more intensely, to offer it as a ray of light to the men and women of our time. What will the years ahead bring us? What will man's future on earth be like? We are not given to know. However, it is certain that in addition to new progress, there will be, unfortunately, be no lack of painful experiences. But the light of divine mercy, which the Lord in a way wished to return to the world through Sister Faustina's charism, 
will illumine the way for the men and women of the third millennium. My friends, St. Faustina was the first canonized saint of the new millennium in the year 2000. The first saint. And I think it's very providential. In her life, she was called by God to be the quote-unquote secretary of divine mercy. That's what our blessed Lord called her. To write down the instructions, the mission, the plan that he has arranged for her to be the instrument and vessel of divine mercy. As Pope John Paul said, it's not a new message, but it's the message of the gospel reemphasized because we forget, we often forget that God loves us. We often forget how much he loves us. And in an age where sin is rampant, where there's so much evil in the world, in this generation, he sends this poor little sister, this poor religious nun, to be that messenger, to usher in that message of divine mercy. It's a message that has touched millions and millions of people since it was approved by the Holy See. And devotion has spread throughout the whole world. And many people have come to discover the saving power of God's tender love and mercy. And their lives have been changed and transformed, including my own. It's a powerful message, and it's a message that really emphasizes the gospel. Jesus calls all sinners to turn back from their ways and to trust in his divine mercy. This is emphasized in the message of divine mercy that Sister Faustina wrote in her diary. Our Lord instructed her to paint an image, the image I have placed before me, with those rays of blood and water that came forth from the heart of Jesus after he was pierced on the cross. It's a reminder of the first divine mercy image of the crucifix of Jesus on the cross. It's an image that heals our wounds, that heals our brokenness. The gospel we heard today is one of mercy. Who is my neighbor? The, the church fathers, we often think about this parable as an instruction in how we should treat other people, which it is. But the Church Fathers taught that the Good Samaritan was actually an image of Christ himself. Just like we have other parables of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who leaves the 99 to go after the one lost sheep. In the image of God, in the parable of the prodigal son, the father who waits and waits and waits until his son returns. But this, too, is another image of God's infinite mercy. You see, Jericho, geographically, was in a very, very low valley. And throughout the whole Bible, it's symbolic of the place of sin. Jerusalem, on the other hand, was the high place 
the place where God dwelled, the place where everyone ought to be. But you see, the Samaritan came down from Jerusalem to find this poor man half beaten, half dead in the streets of sin. God became man in Jesus Christ to enter our sin and misery in order to come and to save us, to bind up our wounds, to pour oil and wine into them, the oil and wine of the sacraments, and to take us to the inn of his church. This is where we recover, and this is where we are to be cared for, and to be healed, and to be nourished. But at the end of the parable, Jesus said to them, Go and do likewise. And that's the message of divine mercy, that we don't just come to God to receive mercy, that we also give that mercy that we have received. And so we are to be like Christ and always proclaiming the gospel of mercy, the gospel of life, to show others the way to salvation. So today we turn to this humble little nun, this great saint, Saint Faustina, to intercede for our world and for our society, that we may turn to God's infinite mercy while there still is time. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed Faustina, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer of spiritual communion for those watching from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord.
Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed St. Faustina, bearing in our body and death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.